my name is Vila Beck, and you are right by from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And the BBC, the BBC have a message for you. That message is, we're better than you. We're so much better than you. We're much better people than you in every way. Now, mostly they don't think they're better than you because you're evil. No, they think a lot of you out there are evil, right? They think they are. But they think mainly think you're uh, they're better than you because you're just stupid. You are stupid and you've accepted these evil ways upon yourself. But then the BBC, they're so much better than you. They're so much more edumacated than you. They want to edumacate you more uh, uh, so you won't be evil. And they uh, and they uh, uh, yeah, and that's what they're trying to do. Very valiantly, they're very stunning. They're very very brave. Now, I know we are not we are not the you know as edumacated as the BBC, but uh, uh, the people who work at the BBC. Uh, uh, but we're going to cast our eye over a few news stories over the last few days and see if we can you know see if a narrative narrative pops out and pops out from the from these stories. Now, as I said, we're not as smart as the BBC. We're not as edumacated as the BBC. So what we say really doesn't matter. Uh, it certainly doesn't matter to the BBC. Or does it? <laughs> or does it? Or does it? That's going to be the uh, uh, the theme and the question of this little video. Season screen to everybody. I hope you had a fantastic Yule time, and I hope you're in still enjoying a, uh, a a very fun holiday season. Uh, can I ask you guys? Can you ask you guys? Uh, can you do me one one real solid? Here, I'm going to ask you to do me several really so real solid. Can you ask me to do one real solid first? Hit the like button. Hit that share button. Mostly hit the subscribe button. Uh, unlike the BBC, I I I you know I like my audience, <laughs> and, I, and, and I. I want my audience to grow. I don't want to, yeah, I'm not happy with the idea of the audience shrinking to the same, in the same rate the BBC's audience is shrinking. Uh, so hit the subscribe button. That'll be fantastic. And really, if you like your independent voices here on YouTube, hit that subscribe button is, uh, um, the one of the best things you could do. One of the other great things you could do is, is go to your bank account, take all the money out of it, all the money out, go and buy gold bars and then go to my video notes and look at the uh, the address and send them to me. I'm going to look after them for you. No problem. No problem. That's how you have to go. Or if you want, you could just hit the subscribe button. Now, if you subscribe, you can enter my weekly competition. The prize is giving away tonight. Tonight, while I, uh, well, I was going to say on the Tuesday, no, while I'm on my channel, I am doing a live watch along of, uh, of Wonder Woman 84, a truly truly terrible movie you don't need to have the movie to enjoy the watch along right we are going to give you a full uh, 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 yeah a full description of what's going on uh, this movie is terrible it's so bad so I'm gonna give I'm gonna get be giving away tonight when I live stream what am I giving away there it's called the rabbi from another planet's Christmas stocking the rabbi from another planet's Christmas stocking there's a whole bunch of stuff that only one winner only one winner is gonna get the and so what's in the Christmas stocking we have uh, the nth doctor the nth doctor Fantastic book, which uh, 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 details all the Doctor Who movies that, that weren't made. It's really kind of interesting. We have uh, Judge Dredd, uh, Justice One, a good sci-fi Judge Dredd story. We have this incredibly rare uh, audio adaptation, one in the 1960s. Well, there we go. How, how, what should I do? Go this way. One of the 1960s uh, 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 Dalek comic strip starring David uh, David Graham, voice of David Parker. Uh, voice of Parker. Here, see if I can show this. They built a life-size Emperor Dalek for this. It's so cool. It's so freaking cool. So there's that. There is, uh, what else have we got? We've got James Bond, Quantum of Solace on Blu-ray. We have uh, James Bond Legends, PS3. I kind of like you like shoot things as James Bond. I like it too. Uh, Star Trek uh, on uh, PS3. J. James. I still liked it. I like this game. You know, again, and yeah, you have to be prepared to swim against the crowd. Be a YouTuber, I guess. Uh, uh, Red Dwarf, uh, Back to Earth on DVD. Uh, what else we got? Countermeasures. Countermeasures. Uh, a full cast audio drama. The Mavella Maneuver. This guy playing the Chief Mavella is really good, by the way. It's great casting. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Dark Shadows. Kingdom of the Dead Part 1. I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I only got Part 1. I actually haven't listened to it all or Part 2. I, I don't know Part 2. We have Highlander. <laughs> there can be only one. Uh, uh, oh, apart from the other one, which is Adrian Paul, who's reading this book on tape, uh, Kurgan Rising. And finally, what I'm adding into the stocking today, what I'm adding into the stocking today is Melvin Stone Mysteries. This is written by Nef, uh, Nef Fountain, starring Nicola Bryant, the gorgeous, the wonderful, the, the sublime Nicola Bryant. Uh, um, basically, it's a spoof on Doctor Who. From what I can tell, it's a, it's a spoof on like sci-fi genre. Uh, uh, so you win all that. You win all of that. All, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel 
And in the comments, leave the hashtag Merry Christmas, one and all. Merry Christmas, one and all. Fine, so let's start looking at these uh, news stories. The first one, the first one that my, my I came across was this one. Uh, 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 here we have Simon Callow. Simon Callow, who was in Doctor Who uh, in, the, in the 2005 se season, uh, uh, playing uh, uh, Charles Dickens. Simon Callow, Simon Callow, uh, it says, uh, Simon Callow, for wedding star, opens up about, uh, opens up on terrifying financial situation. Very scary. Uh, Simon Callow, best known for playing uh, Gareth in Four Rings and a Funeral. To you, mate, not to me. I still know Simon Callow from Chance and a Million, okay? If you know, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, Four Rings and a Funeral, he has spoken out about the financially tough year many actors around the country have faced owing to COVID-19 restrictions. So we're going to see this a lot. People say, I woe is me, COVID, COVID. Yeah, uh, uh, that's one reason. That's one reason. Uh, also, uh, uh, you know, actors like to uh, be like the BBC. The actors like to be like the BBC and and be stunning and brave and help educate people. So let's see what uh, let's see what the result of uh, helping educate people is. Simon Cowell's only one revealed exclusively to the Express because nobody else has asked him that for many actors this year had been a dis uh, disaster after theatres remained closed. For long periods, but we, you know, very, very long periods. Uh, four weddings start, blimey. The, four weddings and funerals start. That's the third time they've got this in this article in the first, like, three few lines. Uh, admitted that uh, very few actors have been able to work, which have been created a simply terrifying time for performers. Uh, yeah, wow, wow, wow. It, it could be, it could be people, you know, us unwashed masses don't really give a crap about your problems after you spent years and years uh, 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 looking down your nose at us, really. Um, so, that, yeah, there's that go going. So why do I... Why do I feel uh, uh, they spent years and years looking down there and wagging their finger? That's a pretty darn good question. Well, let's look at this article over here uh, from the Express. Now, the reason I'm not looking at the websites is there's too many bloody ads, right? I couldn't get to see the whole thing. I normally just share the website. No, I, but it's on their website. Another nail in the coffin. BBC warned Christmas schedule could spell the end of the license fee. So here's, here's the truth of what's going down. Uh, uh... Uh, BBC are very, very, you know, firmly educating people. Uh, not going down so well. Not going down so well. And in their education, they uh, uh, they keep making TV shows that uh, that nobody really wants to see. Right? Nobody really wants to see. I mean, like, honestly, Wonder Woman 84, uh, without the hypnosis uh, uh, of uh, putting in in the cinema, uh, it, it, uh, like, thank God. Thank God. Uh, 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 was it Paddy Jenkins? Uh, locked down her next two uh, directing gigs. It's so bad that, uh, uh, you know, you, it, it's it's so bad that you, it could be a career ender, right? It's that awful. It's that awful. And I just don't think people are, are willing to put up with your crap anymore. And one of the reasons it's so awful is because much like the BBC's output, it's full of education, especially for us, you know, evil, toxic white males, right? Lots of education there. Another on the coffin, BBC warm Christmas schedule could spell the end of license fee. Yeah, yeah, because people are, are tired of swallowing your crap. How tired are they of swallowing your crap? Uh, I'm going to tell you how tired you are, uh, how tired they are. Your ratings, the BBC ratings, are down uh, between 40 and 60% from last year. Uh, on, on, the Christmas, on the Christmas schedule, uh, ITV's ratings remaining reasonably solid. Funnily enough, you know, uh, uh, I think EastEnders, EastEnders last year... The big Christmas senders, which got kind of a low rating, I'm surprised. Got, uh, I think, what, 5.5 million viewers. Uh, uh, this year, they got 3.3 million. That's a, a reduction of 40%. The highest rated show last year was Gavin and Stacey, which got 11 million viewers, right? 11 million viewers. Highest rated show uh, this year was The Queen's Bloody Speech. Got 6 million viewers. That's a 50% reduction. 50% reduction uh, in viewers because people are not interested in being shoveled your sanctimonious bullcrap constantly. So what kind of sanctimonious bullcrap? The uh, BBC Christmas special is another nail in the coffin, uh, coffin for the corporation. Yeah, listen, they, 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 just like everybody else, faced with uh, uh, extinction, just like, you know, all the actors, are they going to back down from wagging their fingers? No, they're not. No, they're not. And yet, and yet still, uh, uh, there's terrifying financial year. I, they're not really connecting to their 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 crappy behaviour. Uh, BBC's Christmas uh, uh, TV schedule is another nail in for the corporation, uh, according to the campaigners uh, demanding the end of the licence fee. Yes, it can't come 
Soon enough, the BBC has uh, held its own success for its offerings over the over the festive period, saying it has pulled out all the stops to offer a range of unmissable programs. Well, it seems that most people miss them in the end. Really, you got 3.3 million for EastEnders, your prime time soap, your number one soap. That's a 40% reduction. Why have 40% of people uh, found your unmissable programs? Very, very missable. Why? Why do you think that could be? But uh, with rehash shows and recut repeats filling time slots, campaigners... Have, honestly, this Christmas could have been huge. Could have been huge. Uh, uh, ITV, ITV, Mind Dot on the Orient Express. You know, more come on. Put out stuff that people like to see. But the trouble is, the things that people like to see are often a little bit... You know, toxic masculine, a little bit white, a little bit male. So you can't have that. Oh, no, not, uh, not in 2020. Uh, so you'd rather have no viewers instead. Uh, but uh, but really, uh, campaigners have warned they'll be left unimpressed by the schedule. Rebecca Ryan, campaign, uh, campaign director for Defund the BBC, said, I think people are going to be extremely disappointed with the BBC's offering. Well, darling, darling, Rebecca, Rebecca I don't think there's, uh, there's, there's much surprise there, really, for anyone. It's a huge number of beats over the Christmas period. Uh, yeah, listen, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry that, you know, things are a bit rough to make TV right now. Uh, try being inventive and clever. I mean, I, I saw stage freaking awesome. Absolutely awesome. There's a lot that could be done, but not that a lot that could be done while your hands are tied behind, behind your back with uh, 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 edumacating. <laughs> edumacating the British public. Uh, the BBC has been hiding behind the excuse that we've had a pandemic for a year and therefore they've been uh, uh, limited in, in, in what they can produce. They're still being fully funded by the taxpayer. Very good point. Uh, uh, um, exactly. So where's all the money going then? Are you just keeping it on the side? We we should really have a year off, right? We should have a, a you know six months off from the from the licensee. No. Oh, what? You're not for that? What? 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 Shot? Sure. What a surprise! You're not for that. Um, they could have uh, used that time to come up with innovative solutions to the problems that they face. They could have. Um, they scheduled this year. Uh, the schedule this year includes Strictly Come Dancing special that recaps dances from previous uh, series of the show and a recap of moments from the past thirty years of how, Have I Got News for You? Listen, I, I, it's, I, these, these are good fillers. These are fillers. You know, it used to be when I when I was a kid, yeah, Barry Norman's doing it. It'll be all right on the night, which just showed you a bunch of bloopers. And everyone, <laughs> so much. These are fillers. These are not your crown jewels. And you know how we know they're not your crown jewels? Because no one's bloody watching them. Uh, Mr. Ryan warned the increased competition due to Netflix and Amazon Prime and BBC's uh, tie schedule uh, uh, is risking turning off viewers. It is a tire schedule. It's enough now uh, for the license fee. Uh, if people had the freedom to choose whether or not they uh, to fund the BBC, it wouldn't be so bad. Absolutely. Absolutely. If your paycheck is dependent on not being obnoxious, uh, 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 you, you, you tend to be not so obnoxious. Here's a good example. Most of us, most of us work for a living, right? Most of us work for a living, which means most of us have a boss. And most people have a boss at some point or another want to tell their boss they are an asshole. They are wrong. They are stupid. Most people would like to do that. We are the boss of the BBC. And, and, and uh, uh, BBC feels no compunction into mentioning what an arsehole they think we are. And the truth is, we're, they're right. We are arseholes because we put up with this bloody nonsense. So what is this nonsense we're putting up with? Let's read this article, shall we? Director of BBC's Cultural Diversity. That they have a director of cultural diversity means you're an organisation of racists. It means you're an organisation of racists that uh, 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 doesn't have normative natural diversity. Now, why is that? Why are you, why are you an organisation of racists? Or perhaps are you uh, uh, a political commissaire trying to re educate Britain uh, 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 to, to follow your twisted... Uh, value system and your mostly your 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 uh, your politics right uh, uh and to, to change the face of britain into something that nobody really agrees with now like most people are okay with uh, uh, um anybody defining themselves any way they want uh, uh but most people also uh, think freedom of speech is good not the bbc not the bbc they they they're big into uh um uh, uh, silencing any freedom of speech that doesn't go along with their with their narrative. If somebody uh, uh, and when's the last time anybody's been presented positively on any BBC TV show who believes there are generally speaking two genders? Uh, when when does that happen? Uh, and uh, when yeah, how often do we get uh, uh, you know n white male 
heroic <laughs> figures. I mean, not that often, really. I mean, if you get a heroic figure, they're more often a you know, a kick-ass female, right? And it's just, and people, oh, they're just not that so interested. The mere exit of diversity doing thing insists white privilege is a fact of life. Uh, no, no, white privilege is, in my opinion, in my opinion, white privilege is a, an excuse that uh, uh, weak people hide behind so they don't need to do as much work as, uh, as, as, as or they can explain not not they're not receiving as much success they want. No, a lot of people hit brick walls in their lives, especially in the creative professions, right? A lot of people, we don't go, oh, because people don't like me because my skin color, bleh! No, we don't do that. Uh, uh, and I think probably people are better for not doing that. But back by reintroducing, uh, but back by reintroducing all the li uh, lyrics from Rule Britannia, that it was even uh, uh, thought to be removed was uh, an obscenity at this year's proms. And it says, I'm not part of the liberal elite. Oh, well, if you're telling us, you, uh, uh, mi uh, Miss Sapong, Miss June Sapong, our, our betters, our cultural betters, who the BBC are very clear that's who you are, uh, that you're not part of the liberal elite. Who am I to argue with you? Other than you're obviously part of the liberal bloody elite. Your exact, your entire position it reeks of uh, uh, you know liberal uh, elitism. Jun Song Song said white privilege is rife uh, as unfairness is back uh, baked into our sense. It may be in the entertainment industry, and I don't know why. I don't know why that would be. I don't know why being black would be a barrier to entry in any level of. Uh, um, uh, of being in the entertainment industry, but it turns out it turns out that the only place they don't want it to be a bar uh, barrier to entry, in fact, a a, uh, a benefit, is in front of the camera. Behind the camera, not so much, really. I don't understand why. Uh, so I so I don't know I don't know why your industry is racist. But please, can you stop tiring us with your disgusting brush that your industry is uh, rife with? Uh, she said that even white people from low income backgrounds have an advantage because they are never judged on their race. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. I'm going to play a clip at the end of this uh, 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 at the end of this video about how how white people are judged on their race now because of people like you, racists like you. Let's go on. Let's see what else she's got to say. Sabron forty three said white working class also have more power than those uh, from black Asian background. Why? Can, can, prove that, please. I understand you would like to believe that. I like. I think I understand that's an, uh, a convenient excuse to hide behind. But why? What? What? What data do you have to back that up? The BBC director of cultural diversity has insisted white privilege is a fact of life and unfairness is baked into the system. Well, you're baking it in, darling, aren't you? Jun Sapong said that uh, whilst the elite, uh, whilst the elite white males have most privilege in society, no. They have the most privilege in the BBC. You have Piers Wenger, you have uh, Chris Chibnall, you have all these upper class and Matt Strievers, upper class white middle class twits or upper upper class twits. That, I, I I got swipe just now. I started to vomit in my own mouth, and I'm not even making that up. That is crazy. Um, yeah, it might be baked into your system. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you live in a racist industry. Stop looking down your nose at the rest of us who aren't racist. And stop making your boring crap telling us that we are racist when we're really not. It's you. I didn't say that, that elite, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, she said even white people from low income. Okay, we just read all this. We just said this. Let's see what else you want to say. Uh, the 43-3. Why do they keep telling us her age? Okay, 43. Uh, also, religiously back, they said, blah, blah, blah. Okay, speaking uh, about white producer Bronx said, who was appointed to the, uh, the senior role in 2019, told the Telegraph, there is unfairness baked in the in system. Citation. Yeah, citation, please. I, I, I don't see it. I, I, I don't see how being female is any barrier to entry in writing or, or producing or any aspect of television production. Um, but the, uh, I don't. Uh, what was it? I don't for a single second say that all white people are privileged. Of course not. Uh, no, just the assholes running the BBC. But there are uh, uh, benef uh, benefits. Benefits even if you come from a uh, low income anyway. They, uh, you're you're never judged by race. Utter, utter, utter falsehood. I'm sorry. Utter falsehood. That is not true at all. They are judged by the race because of idiots like you. Because you are a racist. You know, I'm sorry, and, and listen, 
Everybody, everybody from an individual to anybody part of any demographic group has different challenges they face. That is true. That is true. Uh, women have challenges they face. Black people have challenges they face. White people have challenges they face. Men have challenges. And those challenges are unique to each different group. I'm sorry you have unique factors running against you. Every freaking human being does. Stop whining. Stop crying into your bloody cornflakes and go and do some sodding work. And sodding work means you, you provide entertainment for a nation. A nation that is turning their bloody noses up at you just in the same way you turned your nose down up at them. Uh, but they've been blocking everyone else. What's wrong? Who's, who's terrible, terrible lack of privilege has uh, uh, 75,000 pounds a year. Really? Uh, for working three days a week at the BBC? Are you... That doesn't sound like you're, you're, you're short on privilege there, darling. Uh, continue. You may, uh, you may be discriminated against because of your class. You may be discriminated against because of your age. You may be discriminated against because of your gender. Yes! Yes, just get on with it! Like you discriminate against me and against me because of my skin colour and my gender and my beliefs. You know, yes! Yes! And you see me crying? No! Oh my god! God, these whining little babies make me want to strangle them. Um, never gonna go make because of your gender, uh, but you will never be discriminated against because again, I'm gonna prove you wrong at the end of this video. Uh, maybe because of your race, and that itself uh, feeds into the concept of white privilege. Well, again, I'm, I'm that's uh, utter fallacy. She added that she is working to increase the white working class representation of the BBC. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, but, you know, again, the way to do it maybe is get white working class people making TV shows. The way to increase representation is to have black people making TV shows. Not by casting, you know, uh, historical figures as, uh, who are white as black people. My God, it's the most insane thing I've ever seen in my life. Meanwhile, so Bronx is the BBC director and team David reversing the decision to not sing uh, Royal Britannia and Lando and Glory. Yeah, you kept saying that. Uh, BBC initially, okay, fine, but we're going back to that. Is it still going to, it's going to hash up that. Uh, Thurong had just released a third book, uh, The Power of Privilege, How White People Can Challenge Racism. I'm doing it right now. I'm challenging your racism. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Thank you. you can send, send me a check later. That'll be fine. Uh, speaking about power imbalance in society, the thing about modern privilege is that if you're the beneficiary, you're often unaware Oh, do you think you could be unaware of the privilege you have, idiot? Uh, unaware of your uh, your benefit, and that's the whole point, isn't it? No. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, no. 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 Just be a good person. Everybody decide to be good people, right? I, I, and yeah, you know, just hire people on 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 mobility and give people equal opportunity, right? Yeah. No. Not opportunity. Not 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 not. Yeah. You know, don't have uh, equality of outcome. Have equality of opportunity. And if you can demonstrate, if you can show that is not available at the BBC or in the entertainment industry, I'm with you. I'm with you. But I don't think you can demonstrate that at all. Uh, and I think, uh, I think actually the minute white people understand that instead of saying, oh my God, God I can't stand it. Okay, so I'm going to play a clip right now. Uh, uh, um, for all, I can't read any more of this. Uh, I'm going to play a clip right now uh, about introducing a new educational uh, program into uh, 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 American school, uh, school rooms. Uh, and people are, are speaking out against it. Uh, because it's racist, because it paints white people as being bad. So what is this? Uh, what is the problem? We're going to see in the words of uh, this poor mother, this poor mother who's pleading on behalf of her, uh, of her children that they uh, have been ostracized because of their skin color, because of their skin color, because of these racist policies that are dripping throughout uh, British society. And thankfully, thankfully, British society is not a racist one. You know, I, I, time and time again, British society had the opportunity to be, be racist. And time and time again, British society said no. Going back to the 1930s, when, when they turfed the fascists out of the East End, right up to last year, where they turfed uh, 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 the racist leader of the Labour, Labour Party uh, uh, out and gave him one of the biggest, uh, biggest uh, 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 losses of all time. 
right to the BBC. BBC, we are, uh, the British public are absolutely sick of your racism. Sick of your disgusting racism. And they're opting out. They're opting out the licence fee. And they're certainly opting out of watching your preachy garbage you are trying to shove down our throats. By the way, uh, uh, for anybody who didn't know, Doctor Who's got a, uh, a, a special coming up in, in a week's time. Uh, given that the East Enders got 3.3 million, drop of 40%. I, I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see what the viewing figures are going to be for like, like for that. And yes, I will be making one or two videos about that. My name is, uh, who is mine? My name is Sula Beckett, the rabbi from another planet. Go check out this clip. Freaking incredible, heart wrenching. Uh, 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 and I think it says everything. My name is Sula Beckett, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, subscribe, and have yourself a freaking wonderful, absolutely uh, fabulous uh, festive Yuletide period. <laughs>